has a uh, hexagon or a polygon, so we're looking for information 80 across the, uh, the corner, and that's going to give us this dimension extension line. So when I'm looking at, uh, at those geometries, that's going to be a circumscribed circle as opposed to an inscribed circle. So going across the points, we have to make a different selection. Okay, so let's jump in. We'll adjust my screen here just a second. All right, got a little shift there, file new. This is going to be a metric part. All right, so with uh, being well into chapter three, you should have made your templates. Uh, as you uh, go a little further and we get into, uh, get through chapter four and five, then now is really a good time to start looking at building up the uh, the assembly template since it's not that big of a jump. All right, so we're going to draw this on the top plane. <clears throat> and a good location would be the uh, the center of the uh, the polygon. So we'll come up to the polygon tool. It does have six sides. We have the check mark for the inscribed and the circumscribed circle. And I'm going to place it at the center. I have the yellow inference that uh, coincident that's telling me that I'm going to get that relation. And then I'm going to kind of get it close. All right, there we go. And then I can accept. And the polygon requires we give it the dimension. So going to the um, to the circumscribed circle, I can dimension or I could dimension from the points, but a lot of times grabbing those circles is about as easy as anything. Then any of the flats, one of those needs to be horizontal to bring it to uh, being a fully defined sketch. All right, so my interior geometry, the circle with the, um, uh, the notches, this now shifts us over into contours and regions. And so if I go ahead with that strategy, then I'm not really concerned with um, keeping everything kind of, kind of uh, at that you know, first gray level. All right, so the shaded sketch contours, as soon as I draw an interior, I have a lighter and then the darker gray. Uh, let's go ahead and put a dimension on. So as we go, we're getting some of these taken care of. It has a diameter of 50. Or we'll try the... undo a couple times. I lost, uh, I lost track of that. All right, so we'll try 50 this time instead of 80. There we go. All right, so a good one for this to generate the notches is rather than draw individual segments, I'm going to draw a couple of center rectangles. And that will give me the overlap. So since these are 12 millimeters wide, and let's see, have a length of, and I'll make those equal real quick. All right, and then they're 60 millimeters across. Alright, and then back into select, and any of the edges there will also be equal. So even though that looks pretty complex, what I'm really going for is this outside shape. Alright, so all of this interior, not so concerned unless that was part of the, uh, the geometry, but we'll see what we, can, uh, what we can pick there. So I have a fully defined sketch. I've added uh, all the relations that I can uh, I can think of. The contour 
I like to add in first so I get that preview. So if I don't see the yellow amber preview, then that is an indicator that we're going into contour and region. So once I pick the, the region, then I will get the preview minus the interior. And if we come back and grab the outside, then it's going to be a solid shape, ignoring all of the interior geometry, assuming that we're going to do something different. So we'll grab that piece. It has a height of 35. And while that looks a little tall in the un uncut portion, uh, it's probably going to be about right after we create the um, create the angle. All right, so on the drawing, I'm clocked 90 degrees, and I don't really need to change that. If I did, we could go back into the sketch and wait for it to catch up. I could go back into the sketch by right-clicking, editing the sketch, and remembering that I set that line as horizontal, I would take that horizontal off and make um, make one uh, vertical. So the question would be, if I do that, will this center go with it? And the answer is probably not. So let's go uh, let's go and set that to vertical, and it shifts around the outside. And well, because of the symmetry, it actually uh, still ends up in the same position. But if I was expecting this interior to move, and let's see if we did a uh, control Z real quick as an example. If I move it just a little bit, the interior is not moving with it. So because I drew it in that original, I'm going to just discard the changes um, so it goes back with the, uh, the horizontal. Um, I want it to stay in that uh, original and whatever my motivation for wanting to change it, we're going to just decide to live with it for this um, uh, this example and next time make a different decision. So on the right plane, and my video card is dragging a little bit, so I open up the sketch on the right plane. If we drew in the rotating rotated uh, portion, then I would still be looking for that um, that plane that bisects. So, if it's like the figure in 328, then I would probably be selecting the front plane. And so my index will go and grab, or we'll grab the vertex of um, the upper uh, upper corner, and that's going to get me coincident, and then going to the opposite side coincident. I need a dimension of 15 from the base. All right, and then this is probably a good point to review the um, the projection. So I selected this line as my baseline, but when I look at that in terms of the right plane, that line projected will just be a straight line even though in the model it's kind of angled away. So SolidWorks doesn't really care as long as the projection into that plane is something that can be selected and stays uh, will stay linear to the uh, to the sketch. Alright so at this point I have a an open profile and I don't really need to close off the triangle to make this work. The geometry doesn't need to be more more complex than this. We're going into the extrude cut. I want to pay attention to the arrows. Right now I'm going in one direction and we're going to go through all both. Kind of will indicate that we're going down. So I want to flip the side to cut by clicking on the arrow or coming over to the property manager and selecting flip side to cut. Go ahead and make the selection. Now I have my geometry. And so we'll go ahead and save this and then get ready for the next, uh, next example.